This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Hey guys, welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show, 641 Tuesdays. We've been celebrating professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We got a fun one uh, going on today. You might say an evolution of the show. Uh, but with us from Poughkeepsie, New York, he is the only Mayhemer with a future endeavor letter from the WWE. He is Mad Mike. Sorg, I'm not Mad Mike today. <laughs> You're not Mad Mike today. I'm not Mad Mike today. Tomorrow's Halloween. Yes. So today I am Thanos Strowman, and you're going to get this hand. <laughs> I said the costume's in the second half, Mike. Oh, that's just your okay. That's just your okay. daily wear. That's right. Sword, that's, just, that's how you yeah, go to work. I have a reality gem. I made it the second half. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to be so screwed in editing. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> But also with us, she's been on the Indie Mayhem show before, uh, but now joining us for the first time on the Wrestling Mayhem show, we have London Ali joining us here in studio. Welcome! Hi! Pro wrestler, women's wrestler, intergender! Yes, say it all. Women's say wrestler. All. You were the only one missing from the panel we didn't get, but I'm I glad know. to have you on for this. Thank so. you. We got you. We got you your own showcase here today. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, thank you for joining us. No uh, so we are going to, of course, talk about uh, uh, WWE Evolution and everything going on with that and a few other news items mm-hmm. here from the week. But thank you, everybody, for joining us in the Facebook Live. We got a whole bunch of people joining us out there, including our friend Alex Cars and Alex Miller out on the West Coast, Billy F. and Johnson, some guy named Morgan, um, as well as Tina Keys up there in Seattle. And uh, I think I saw Brandon from the KC as well. Thank you so much for joining us on our Hot Wheels. Wait, Hot, Wheels. Hot Wheels. That's the one I'm missing. Hot Wheels is leading the way and hanging out with us as well. So that's good to see uh, the whole crew hanging. Uh, you can check us out. We're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can check out this and other podcasts that we do, like the Indie Mayhem Show. You can see the interview we did with London, as well as the Raw Wrap-Up. And every once in a while, we kind of get around to Lurch Underground when I catch up on stuff. We will be doing one soon, damn it. I'm telling Sorry. you. Sorry. <clears throat> you see, it is my fault. It is my fault. Uh, as, as I'll take full responsibility for the lack of Mayhem Undergrounds. Um, Sorry. If you don't watch Lucha soon, we're going to have to put you in a match. Very special match that's uh sacrifice to the gods. <laughs> Who's Matanza in this? Like who 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 represents Matanza a, 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 in the sacrificing world? Or do I have to tell you? Okay, he's holding up the gauntlet again. I got you. Okay, all right. <laughs> he just needs to snap. Uh, what's that? Oh, uh, producer Missy has volunteered to be the Matanza in this situation. And I am entirely on board with that. <laughs> Uh, but you can check out everything in there uh, um, and you can also look up the Wrestling Mayhem Show on your favorite podcast and video form uh, over there uh, please like and rate us and share us with your friends and help the Mayhem Nation grow drop us a line at that email address good times good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0 at Mayhem Show on the Twitter we tend to talk a lot on there and interact with you guys and uh, also thank you to our streaming partners the 405 media.com our friends on the west coast they're carrying us every single night at 9 p.m pacific time midnight eastern so you can fall asleep to the sweet sounds of mayhem thank you to our patreon supporters at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show including our fan of the show one dollar level Bo diggity Woo! Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment. And at the Pocket Club $5 level, where we, I don't know, what did we talk about? We talked about things we won't talk about on the show. That's all I'll say. Uh, <laughs> thank you to our friends over there at Occupy Pro Wrestling, Christopher Bishop, Bradley Ruthers, Doc Remedy, and Dave Potter of the Tiny, Tiny Shutter Podcast. And at the Pizza Club $10 level, he's in the chat room tonight, Billy F. and Johnson. 
You guys can support the show if you get value out of this, if we've made you laugh, even just a little tickle in your funny bone. Hi. Uh, Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show and uh, help us keep the lights on here in the studio. Um, so there was a pay-per-view this weekend. It was the uh, WWE's Evolution pay-per-view. Um, and we have like some multiple perspectives because London and I watched it. And uh, Mad Mike was there in person. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. I'm representing a different female wrestler today. Yes. Blue pants. Blue pants. And also, actually, if I hold this up here, it kind of just looks like I'm a severed head for Halloween. It's like you're wearing a weird, like, like partial hoodie. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. A weird, incomplete hoodie. I was gonna say it just looked like like I was a head that had pants on. <laughs> head pants. Welcome to the new newest character on uh, the newest guest on Mayhem Show. Head pants. And I'll be in the ring because guess what? I don't have shoulders to pin to the mat, sword. <laughs> How does that work? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Is that match where where Zach Allen fought the pair of legs? How did he win? Might have been a submission, if I recall. Anyways, London, we we, we kind <laughs> of it was the Battle Royal. That could have been. Well, yeah, it should have been. Um, well, that's the floor, so we 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 did have a little bit of our, our opinions leak out uh, last night on the on the Raw wrap up. Um, so as a uh, up and coming women's wrestler yourself, mm-hmm. uh, you know, what did you? How do you feel the show came off? Um, overall, I thought it was a good idea. Mm-hmm. Um, I just expected a little more. You know, they had like a great opportunity to have some of the greatest women's matches of this time. You know, they had Trish Stratus, Lita, Mickey James. You have Molly Holly, Sasha Banks. This was a perfect time to have those historic matches again. Mm-hmm. Um, overall, I think it was a success. So I can't be mad at it. I can't be mad at it at all. That's good. That's good. Uh, Mike, of course, you were there in person. Uh, what was the what was the vibe coming in that show? Oh, the vibe. It was real positive. Mm-hmm. It was a real positive vibe. Um, lots of lots of women's merch. Lots of women's merch. Um, every merch stand there was all female merch. There were no John Cena shirts. There were no AJ Styles shirts. Nothing like that. It was fantastic. Um, it's everything sold out so quickly. Mm-hmm. I didn't even get the merch that I wanted. Oh my! Yeah, which is a great sign. Shitty for me, but a great. <laughs> sign. And I want to point out also a show that wasn't terribly like sold out or anything either. Oh no, it was sold out. Oh, it was sold out. It was. Yeah, yeah. It it was it was. There were maybe a couple hundred seats that weren't sold, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but that building was full. Okay, because we were kind of worried about it because we were watching the the pre show and it looked like a lot um, was empty going into it, and it was dark for the rest of the night. Yeah. So let me let me tell you about a little place called Long Island. Uh, <laughs> tell me about Long Island. I've never been. Oh, the Nassau Coliseum, fucking sucks. <laughs> okay, it sucks. Okay, uh, yeah the the merch line. Took me about forty minutes. Wow! Whoa! Just, just to get up there and see they didn't have what I wanted. <laughs> oh no! What did you want? Then I had to get food. Then you had to get food. <laughs> yeah, wait, 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 hold! But London's, London's asking, what What did yeah. you want to get that they didn't have? I just wanted the event shirt. They sold out the I, event shirt. I just wanted the event shirt in a big boy size, and they were <laughs> sold out. They had plenty of the little girl sizes, probably right. They had plenty of smalls, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my size. But there was, there, was, <laughs> there was merch there for almost every, like, definitely for every um, main roster talent. Mm-hmm. Ray DeVille has a shirt. Natty has a shirt. Um, wow. Mandy Rose has a shirt. There was a Michelle McCool shirt, for fuck's sake. Whoa! <laughs> I didn't even know that existed anymore. Whoa! <laughs> like, did it look like a throwback? Or was did they make a no, new shirt for her? It was new. Wow. And I, I would, I would hazard a guess that she was maybe supposed to wear it on SmackDown 1000, mm-hmm. but her, seg- her segment got cut. That's a guess. That's a guess because she was advertised for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there were tons of merch. There's a new Oscar shirt that is 
bitching. <laughs> I almost got that too. Um, but of course they were at, I'm just gonna buy stuff on the website when it goes up. But um yeah, they're out of programs. Jeez. I couldn't get that program. Uh it was very like well received. Um I mean I don't think it was a perfect show, of course. Mm-hmm. You know, never gonna be a perfect show. Uh it ended a lot earlier than I think some of us were expecting. Mm-hmm. It it did. Which, you know, is a is a blessing and a curse. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Like, if, if this was Backlash and it ended 40 minutes early, I'd be like, hey, that's great, you guys. <laughs> like this, I'd be like, we, we could have gone to 11. There was a, because I, I did look up in advance, um, and, and the Hardy special was officially scheduled for 1030. So, yeah. But, so it was that. They control the Alpha. They control the Omega. They could have scheduled that for any fucking time. Uh, of course, of course. So, so there was like there was an expectation of we're doing this long. So at least it wasn't like we we just ran short or cut a match and didn't didn't do something. So well, they didn't book a lot of matches. That that is true. Well, and that's a conversation Lund and I were having before the show. You were saying like there wasn't a lot of like you know all of those top two matches. Everything else was kind of everybody was thrown together, right? Absolutely. I felt like with. Like the Sasha Banks match, that could have been like Sasha and Bailey. Mm-hmm. That could have been, um, like Mickey and what Trish. It could have been Lita and Leisha. It could have, it just could have been a lot of singles matches. Mm-hmm. And I feel like right now, WWE they kind of like teeter totter with that. You know, it's the pit singles matches together, and it's like sometimes I feel like they panic sometimes, and it's like. Just put them all together. Yeah. And it's like, no, like, don't put them all together. I mean, granted. Like a 10 woman tag on Draw. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, like, stuff I'm, like that. Like, give us a singles match. Yeah. Like, I've always, like, me personally, I love singles matches. When I'm in a tag, I'm like, uh, okay. But I love singles matches. I love working by myself. Well, it was interesting because it. I, I, I think it, Lita in a tag team match served them better, though. You think so? Maybe Lita, but not Trish. No, yeah, but I I think I think if you're gonna have Lita on the show and she's not either teaming with Trish or going against Trish, mm-hmm. what is she gonna do? That's why I think teaming her with Trish makes more sense. And if 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 it were me, and you have this team bestie, like two best friends, there's only two people that they should have gone up against: mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bailey and Sasha. Absolutely. Or the Iconics. Mm-hmm. I thought that it, was going to be like the way they were going to go. Because when they said Alicia, not Alicia, uh, Alexa Bliss got injured, I'm like, this is the perfect time to put Peyton Royce and Billy Kay into the mm-hmm. mix. And it's just Alicia Fox. I mean, not saying that she doesn't deserve it. I mean, because she wasn't in the Royal Rumble. So it was like, I think this is her time to shine. That was the thing too. Uh, Missy's agreeing with you. Uh, Producer Missy's agreeing with you. Like there, there should have been more traditional like one on ones like mm-hmm. like other shows, right? Um, and you know, well, what? It, the main problem is they tell you that there are going to be over fifty women on the show. Yeah, yeah. So spoiler alert: we didn't get there. Really? Did you count? Do a count? Yeah. Wow. I did the I did the science, and I'm and I'm even counting the female announcers. Mm-hmm. The female comic mm-hmm. and the and the fe- and the women who showed up on the pre-show still did not make fifty. So what was the number like? 42? It was like forty-two, I think. Oof. Yeah. Well, and at I least mean, it's the meaning of life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I don't think it was, I don't think it was actually forty-two. It was like forty-one or something like that. Mm-hmm. But it was like it wasn't fifty, and I'm like, we could have had. Like a six woman NXT tag team match mm-hmm. for that talent, or and I think originally they talked about having an NXT UK women's championship uh, match too, right? I thought they oh, were going to wait, have wait, that. wait, wait. Oh, yeah. You guys see that? What? Oh, okay, all right. I, I okay. Uh, I thought it was on the kickoff because uh, I was in line. For I'm not aware of any match on the kickoff. No. Okay, uh, there was uh, there was a match we got to see. It was a dark match, apparently. Oh. Uh, Rhea Ripley and Dakota Kai for the NXT UK Women's Sale. Oh, well, maybe that. Well, maybe they filmed it for something down the line. <laughs> uh, we never know. 
I don't know. Uh, and now I'm upset that I was in line for food because I thought it was officially on the kickoff. You thought you were going to officially like, like be I, able to watch it later? And, I and thought stuff. I was going to be able to see it later, and now I cannot because I missed the whole match because I was trying to get some oh, fucking food. <laughs> oh, oh well. priorities. <laughs> oh, well. Why you got to eat? You got Hey, a boy's got to eat. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know. It fell out that, that big boy shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that you didn't get. <laughs> yeah. 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 Fill out the shirt. That, thanks, Sorg. Rubbing it in. Just you know, <laughs> all in the wound. Just right in there. Right, right. Um, well, okay. Uh, obviously, you know, we kind of wish that undercard was a little better. But uh, be t- but I think uh, our, our top four matches, the single matches we did get, I think delivered really well on this show. Um, and also, well, this is the other thing, too. And, I, and you probably weren't aware of this, Mike. But I, I think they were playing live. Like, instead of the two-hour kickoff show, I think the fir- the 7 to 8 o'clock hour was streamed for free. Because they were still talking about subscribing to WWE Network. The first half hour. The first half hour. The first half hour was streamed free on Twitter. So that would have been the uh, Trish and Lita tag team match. Lita, and, which is probably right open the show. And maybe the entrances for the Battle Royal? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's yeah, I, I remember seeing that um, earlier. I was like, oh, I wonder where the cutoff is going to be. So I was keeping an eye on the time. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so that was, that was kind of an interesting play, but probably didn't, since they didn't like, you know, it's, they have a lot of talent, but not as much that they can squeeze in a, a like three pre-show matches, mm-hmm. probably. No, but see, the thing is, they do have the talent. Mm-hmm. They were all there. What's like that? they have more than enough talent. Yeah, right yeah, now. especially with the, all the all the yeah, NXT girls course, and everything, they right? Have a, way oh, more. You don't even need all the NXT women. Mm-hmm. You don't even need all the NXT. Call up six NXT women, have one singles match and a tag match, mm-hmm. and boom, you have everything filled out. What, like ha- the, what happened? The, all the NXT, NXT women Raw? that we had come to Raw just to stand on the stage for the announcement. Nikki fucking Cross was <laughs> front and center on that announcement. And she was not on the show, and it pissed nope. me off. Nope. Nikki Cross has single-handedly carried three men's NXT feuds and her own feud. Don't Nikki just Cross give credit to God Nikki. God right now. <laughs> What's that? Don't just give credit to Nikki. Like, throw some love to Bianca in there. Like, Bianca, mm-hmm. that's my girl. I, throw I, her I, some love. Of course. I, I was <laughs> about to mention Bianca because Nikki has her own feud with Bianca. But Nikki has pushed... The Cassius Ono feud. She's pushed the um who who killed Alistair Black. <laughs> she's pushed the Dream Chompa feud all by herself. All by herself. I cannot name you one male performer that could run three simultaneous feuds that don't involve him. And his own feud by himself. I cannot name you one guy except for maybe The Miz. Yeah. You're right. Maybe The Miz. And that's exceptionally high praise. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He's right. <laughs> well, that's why she wasn't on the show because she's busy carrying NXT. <laughs> I guess so. As a whole. <laughs> so. I guess so. All right. We have so much. I, I want to continue on uh, talking about evolution here, of course. But in the meantime, we got to give a shout out to some indie wrestling here in the group. Hey, if you want to see uh, London Ali in action, you can go over to IndieWrestling.us. It's part of Rise with a Y. Uh, I have to. I have to. You have to say you that. You got to do that now. Thank you, Kevin Harvey. Uh, <laughs> uh, Rise with an I. I've featured a lot on there, of course. I, I, that's your home promotion, I believe, right? Yes, it is. So, and of course, uh, make some waves over in the RWA. And uh, and think you are also featured on Premier Championship Wrestling that's carried over there. Yep. I got to see you up in Cleveland a couple of months ago. I was uh, there this there. weekend. Then this weekend as mm-hmm. well. Yes. Uh, so so you can check 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 out uh, London and actually actually also featured some of our two minute segments on the YouTube and the Facebook page for IndieWrestling.us, too. Mm-hmm. So you can see her in action and, and uh, uh, pick up the rest of those matches, too. Um, also, Zeke Mercer is saying what up. Hey, what's uh, up also, Zeke? Got, keep an eye on <laughs> Zeke, too. Zeke, Zeke and I saw an impressive match in Fight Society a couple months ago. I actually was there when he first started, so yeah. I've always believed in him. He was always one of those guys. He's so small. He was like a practice dummy. <laughs> he can take a <laughs> wicked shop. It's like Zeke, just take his power driver through oh, the table. And he's like, okay, all right. Oh, geez, that poor kid. <laughs> that poor kid. 
He's like um Spike Dudley. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Zeke, I'm so sorry. <laughs> For what's going to befall you in the near future. Uh, but in the, in the meantime, well, hopefully you can catch some of that in the near future over at IndieWrestling.us. Um, we have some new releases. Of course, recently the um, uh, Welterweight Wrestling 4 and that anniversary show that yes. you were on just went up on VOD uh, just um, this morning, technically. Mm-hmm. Uh, so go check it out. Actually, people are already picking that up, and that's really good to see. Welterweight Wrestling, another one kind of given an opportunity um, to uh, individuals under 185 pounds, we got the cruiser weights, but we got the water weights too. That maybe won't even get a chance for that. So that like it's cool that we're getting these kind of subsets of opportunity, and it, it's cool when you do see a show where everybody is the same size. You don't have like poor Nate Wings next to a Duke mm-hmm. Davis, right? <laughs> uh, you know how that's like. <laughs> You've been yes. in those matches. <laughs> Thank- thankfully, more than, more often than not, on the same side now. But <laughs> yeah, that, it's been me and David Lawless. Yeah, yeah, so. oh yeah, which was an incredible match too. Thank you. Um, also featured on IndieWrestling.us, and uh, <laughs> some of that also on the Indie Wrestling US Network that you can link over there. Five ninety nine a month, seven day free trial, including Duke and Doe's Hardcore Memories. I believe we finally have them locked down to record a new episode this week. So hopefully it's not just um, um, Doe asking Duke what PCO is like again. Because uh, there's this yeah. weird undercurrent that I haven't been including in the show where they just talk about like PCO for 10 minutes and I can't use it because we're talk- supposed to be talking about ECW um, or weird bachelor parties in Las Vegas. I don't know. Uh, wow. but, but we release those as extra content every once in a while too. It gets pretty crazy. I, I, I did a lot of editing that tries to get a half hour of those guys. Of what we're supposed to be doing. But uh, it hits a lot of fun. Go check it out. And you can uh, sample some of that over at the www.indywrestling.network. A lot of great stuff yet to be announced coming up as well over on IndieWrestling.us. Okay. Uh, as I rearrange my schedule a little bit here. So Evolution, again, uh, we had a lot of great matches. Let's talk about the Mae Young Classic. My, I, so, Mike, I made it through the first, ra- or the first uh, round of the Mae Young Classic before the show. Okay. So oh I at God. least knew sure. who all the all the contestants were. Okay, okay. so that's, that's, that's I got it. that far, and then I saw the that just by watching the bracketology, right? Well, I did not watch the bracketology. Wow, you, you, no, no. you can just watch that one hour. You have no <laughs> idea how behind I am on pro wrestling right now. I still need to watch last week's SmackDown because I love SmackDown. You um, watch the last month and a half of Lucha, and the last month and a half of Lucha, and all of NXT UK, probably a month and a half now of NXT. And the May Young Classic and 205 Live. Damn it. Uh, you got a lot of I'm TV still waiting. Got a lot to do. Got I got a lot, lot to do. To I'm still waiting for some indie promotion to do 395 Live. I'm waiting for it. I, I think, think I qualify for that. You qualify for that? I think so. I'm, I'm almost there. <laughs> you're, you're, you're working on it, right? I'm almost there. I'm you got like... your sponsor pizza. Uh, work on that. Absolutely. <laughs> We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but anyways, no. But but um, uh, let's talk about let's talk about the May Young Finals. Um, Tony Storm and I, EO. Thank you. EO. It's it's like the captain from Disney World. Sorry. Oh, captain thank you, Snow. Captain EO. There. I'm gonna call her Captain there EO from now on. That's fine. <laughs> she she's the first mate of the pirate princess, so so it all checks out. The oh, first okay. Jeez. Oh, yeah, I put those together for you. Okay. All right. Yeah, uh, yeah, Tony and Eero. Jesus. <laughs> Boy, um, I actually, because I was behind on the May Young, too. I just watched the semifinals mm-hmm. today. Uh, Tony Storm and Mako Satomura. Holy fuck. That maybe, match was awesome. That match was maybe awesome. the best match I've seen all year. Mm-hmm. Like, ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, what did you think, London? I think that match was awesome. Um, it's about time they start bringing these like Japanese girls to America because they've been doing it for years. You even take it back to like the early '90s when Medusa brought these girls over. There was a reason why Japanese wrestling, women's wrestling, is so respected. So, and Tony Storm is just a name for herself. So you put these two names together, like. In that match, I always have like my favorites. Mm-hmm. I'm like Tony, or well, Lacey, or Mercedes. In that match, I was just like, I don't care who wins, just perform. So, <laughs> and, I, and I love you know Mae Young, much like you know the Cruiserweight Classic did. Mm-hmm. It, it does this international thing, right? Yes. It makes sure like there's a lot of representation. And it was really cool that it was like 
you know, two different countries, mm-hmm. you know. It's been like a lot more this year. Mm-hmm. Um, like last year they had like a couple who were, who would like represent a different country. Mm-hmm. Like Mia Yim, she's from the States, but she was representing uh, Korea. Mm-hmm. But this year it was like a lot, like UK, Australia. Yeah. Uh, Marty Bell, I didn't know Marty Bell was, you know, you know, like parents were from Puerto Rico and stuff like that. Like I didn't know her backstory, seen her mm-hmm. how many times, you know. So it was cool to see as part of that. I knew that. Um, I like discovered... I've seen Marty Bell around like 2010. Mm-hmm. I was like 13, 14. I was still a kid. This is back when you were a little London super yes. fan. Uh. I wasn't even London yet. I was just my real name insert here. But um. little London, we'll just go with little London, baby London. But, like that's what you, we usually see a wrestler like in their early days when mm-hmm. they have like like you know if you look at like Elias back yeah. in the day, it's like baby Elias. Like that's. Um, but, um, I still say Shulo. Shulo, yeah. Of course, we still call him Shulo, but um we we've we've shaken off that for at least like the show chat though every th- every time i watch the uh the rick flair Shawn michaels retirement match i'm like oh look there's baby charlotte in the front row yeah <laughs> <laughs> even though she's like 25 <laughs> but uh but no yeah no, she's not that old no. she's a lot younger that's a long time ago sword she's like 22 she's like 30 30 sorry that's almost like 10 years 30. ago that yeah, was like ten years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's that's ten years ago. Wow. Oh wait, yeah, yeah. She was like ago. eighteen or something like nah, that. No, she was like twenty two. Yeah, she started late. She's okay, because like, she's like thirty one, thirty two now. Mm-hmm. Well, she looks like an infant. <laughs> <laughs> she, she looks. She looks like we used to say this all the time about Amon. She looks like a fetus. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> wow. Okay. Um, but she looks a lot younger than she does. Yeah, now. yeah that's the point. Um, yeah. no, great stuff. But speaking of Charlotte, I had a great match with Becky Lynch. Jeez. Oh, my Jeez. It Damn. was, um, there was a, Marcus Mann had a really good comment about, uh, the Mae Young Classic that it was, it was a series of matches that weren't, you know, they didn't wrestle women's wrestling matches. Mm-hmm. They wrestled matches. Mm-hmm. Right. And this looked like any match you would expect from like, I don't know, Seth and Dean Ambrose mm-hmm. coming up with their feud. Like you, you imagine this kind of match and i think there was a lot pulled out there that we haven't seen but of course these are people that have done like the first hell in a cell the first uh uh iron woman matches you money know. in the bank money in the bank so oh, so i mean this really kind of uh first first last woman standing that was that kind of made sense for this well right? well second last woman standing what was the first one nxt Nick, nikki cross and oscar and nxt which if you haven't seen it go fucking find that match because that match was real good too <laughs> I think they said it was the first ever one because it was like WWE and yeah. not like it's, NXT. It's the first one the WWE brand. Yeah. Yeah, so, like yeah. on the main brand and everything too. Um, and I will say this was the best first ever match that they've had. Like, think? I think, it, yeah, I think it was better than the Hell in the Cell. It was better than the uh, the Iron Woman match. It was better than all that stuff. Mm. I, it was, it told such an amazing story. Absolutely. Like, and, and Becky won. Like, <laughs> no, no, like, like it would have been great too if Charlotte had won, but it would have taken a lot of the hype out. Of, it would have taken the air out of the stadium. It was. Because yeah. that place was rocking for Miss Becky Lynch. I tell you what, I, I wince every time I see like an outside table spot after a couple weeks ago with our, our friend Sean Phoenix. Like, it, it, mm-hmm. I, like, it just. It, it's a bad tasty amount. It does a little bit. Yeah. It does a little bit. Um, but you know, again, haven't seen the footage, and for anybody that was there in person, uh, we did talk with Sean this this weekend. And, yeah, uh, that's going to be coming up Thursday um, on the podcast feeds for Indie Mayhem show. Um, so we caught up on Pain Spin Spirits and stuff, mm-hmm. but it's still like it was a kind of a crazy thing that happened with that. And uh, uh, but uh, but yeah, so like seeing especially something like like because uh, it looked like she landed pretty hard. I don't think you can land easy on that. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, there's no softening at that point uh, to take up like a power bomb through the table like that. Um, but uh, no, incredible match. Uh, uh, NXT, great as always. The Mike, the rest of the horsewomen have arrived. Uh, they sure have. They sure have. Um, I, I've heard they've done a lot of good things on the house shows. Okay. And uh, they actually. Um, Marina, Jessamine, and Shayna all team together on the house shows. Ooh, I didn't know they were that far along with everything. So. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. They, they've been having a lot of house shows. 
lot of house show matches, a lot of house show tag matches. I think one of the matches I heard of um, was the Three Horsewomen versus Kyrie, EO, and Dakota Kai. What? I want to and I'm like, oh, I'd like to see that, please. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Um, good stuff there. Um, I, and uh, we, we, so Mike, during Rousey versus Nikki, um, mm-hmm. Nikki got a hell of a response. There were a lot of there were a lot of Bella fans. Yeah, I don't know why, <laughs> but there there are a lot of them. Like. And there are a lot of Ronda fans. Mm-hmm. Like, again, not entirely sure well, why. It, it, it seemed like, you know, you know how, like, the Let's Go John Cena, Cena Sucks is always, mm-hmm. like, the guys versus the little kids? Yeah. Like, this uh-huh. seemed like it was all the guys were Ronda fans, and it seemed like all the girls were Nikki fans. Because you got to think, she had yeah. to show, like, Total Bellas and Total Divas. A mm-hmm. lot of girls watch that. Yeah. I know a lot of girls who want to get in the business because of the show don't know nothing about pro wrestling but they see just the things they go through on the show it's like i want to do it yeah so a lot of girls it's kind of it's kind of like a chick series so yeah it doesn't surprise me that a lot of women do love nikki it's another we talk about it's kind of another entrance point for people that would not get into the machismo side of wrestling right exactly and it's also for the fact that nikki has been well the bella twins have been in the business well in wwe since like 2007 or 2008 and they just started getting popular like five years ago Mm -hmm. the same time the show came out so their show has given them a lot of like fan base and a platform for them to stand on right uh mike mike we were talking about before if we you thought that um there'd be a different kind of crowd there at this show Mm mm-hmm did, did it look yeah. like it was a general one? Did, was there was there more kind of female representation in the audience as well? Um, I didn't really notice too much different. I I noticed a lot more female merch mm-hmm. being worn. a lot like normally I'll see like like a lot of Bullet Club shirts and stuff like that. Didn't see a lot of that. Mm. Didn't see a lot of that. And in fact, I saw like. People wearing shirts for jazz. People wearing shirts jazz. for jazz. Wow. Yeah. People awesome. wearing shirts for uh, Mako. People wearing shirts for people from the uh, the May Young Classic. Like I'm like, oh, okay, this is kind of cool. And I'm assuming they're all from like pro wrestling tees or something like that. Or yeah, um, even Beth Phoenix was was uh, sporting a pretty sweet uh, Bold Nakano shirt. Mm-hmm. During that, yeah. I don't know if that's a WWE one or not. Probably but not. Probably not. <laughs> probably just, not. Beth can do. She's married to Edge. She can do whatever she wants. Uh, <laughs> but I think a lot of men are a like, women's wrestling fans, mm-hmm. and I've got that with my own personal experience. Like guys love it because, like, I think they've known it's been around, especially like the indie like wrestling fans. Mm-hmm. They've seen great women's matches. I mean, they've seen Shimmer. They've seen Rise with an Eye. um they've seen it and then so it's like when it's finally on a platform they're like and it's in wwe it's like yes i can actually go to a wwe show watch some women's watch a women's match and not go to the bathroom Mm -hmm. so it's something that (laughs) that was that was one of the comments this is like wait it's an all-women's show when do we go to the bathroom like seriously there was one was like can we have a men's match so we know when to go to the bathroom Honestly, <laughs> yeah, I I had to rush during one of the uh, video packages. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty much me too. Because I'm like, I've seen all these clips before. So yeah, get yeah. it real quick. Um, <laughs> that was one of the commentaries from it. There was I, I there was one thing I, I kind of teased last night. What was the thing that made Missy uh, producer Missy uh, stand up and take notice? There was a point where they were talking about everything and and uh, kind of the evolution evolution of everything the, the growing of, of the women's mm-hmm. movement and everything and there was a point where i think ray young ray Nye young um said and also we need to thank the men that helped pave the way too to which missy just kind of uh being pretty quiet watching the show she said no you don't do that nope uh, thank you nope, missy nope. <laughs> no one no one should thank the men in WWE for anything no 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 yes uh, and no well, well yeah yes but I, no. I think not not as outwardly right i mean some guys push for them to have a shot 
Yeah. You know, without oh, yeah. Triple H uh, getting yeah. the. Oh, no. Missy is walking up to a microphone <laughs> to explain herself. I mean, right a little here. bit. I Missy, mean... Missy, um, <laughs> well, let me turn your microphone on. What, she got what is. Up I don't have a camera on her, but. Uh, yeah, I, I literally walked okay. across the room. I, so I, I can I, have a microphone. Am I framing this correctly here? Yeah, because I'm watching it. And as a woman, it's really cool because. This is an all women's show. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's, you're it's, celebrating. It's celebrating women the and fact wrestling. that women are finally getting their shot. That it's no longer the mud wrestling, no longer the brawn panties matches, no longer the you know just stupid stuff that that was a few decades ago. That it's now legit, like awesome wrestling, and it's not men doing it; it's women doing it, and they're doing matches that could rival some of the stuff that we've seen men do. Mm-hmm. And they're doing it their own thing. Like, it's, it's this great thing. It's I kind of put it akin to uh, when, oh, what the heck's her name? Jersey Girl. Oh, uh, Liv? No, Liv. no, no, no. Um, Carmella? Carmella. Oh, when Ellsworth helped? When Ellsworth yeah. won the belt. And yeah. it took it. It took the shine off of the fact <laughs> that this is this women's mm-hmm. rumble mm-hmm. because this dude just won the belt. Mm-hmm. Like he just he just cheated and got the belt for her. Which and not in a like Harvey Whippleman winning no. the men's belt kind yeah. of way. No, yeah. it was it was a she can't do this by herself. Yeah, I have to help her. Well, it's like they translated a classic trope in wrestling storytelling, as in I can't do it without my manager. You know. But, yeah. but the weird thing, it didn't translate when you're trying to put over that you're progressing women's wrestling. And that was See, the thought the, that I had yeah. when they, when Renee said, you know, we have to thank all the men who've been here too. Yeah. Because it was, no, this is not the point. We're not thanking the men because the women have done this. Yeah. This is all the women. It's about the women. Let the women stand on their own. Don't, don't make this about the men. Yeah. Because that's not what the show is about. Uh, Mike, you were trying to say. Yeah, uh, like, and the thing with Ellsworth, like, I knew that entire thing was going to happen. I literally called it on the Mayhem show the week before. <laughs> anyway, like, they they were kind of shaping up for it, weren't they? Yeah, uh, kind of. But if they had done that for the second Women's Money in the in the Bank ladder match, I think it would have been fine mm-hmm. because you're telling a story with it. Because I see the story they were trying to tell with it. It's a very classic story. Like the manager goes up and grabs the grabs the belt, grabs the briefcase, whatever. But they're touting it as the first women's money in the bank. And th- like, if you guys remember, they had to redo that match. Mm-hmm. And did the same they redid thing. that match on SmackDown just so we had the clip of Carmella unhooking the briefcase her damn self. Yeah. Like. That was the entire reason we redid the match. It was weird when they put that over as a, look what happened on SmackDown. We completely had a Money in Bank match. It's like, yeah, but why did you do that? Well, they, they were talking about, <laughs> they brought it up on uh, SmackDown 1000 a, a week ago. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, or two weeks ago, I guess. Try to remember where I'm at in SmackDown uh, <laughs> chronology. But uh, yeah, uh, all together, I, I'm hoping they do another one. Uh, I hope it's not uh, uh, as shrouded as, you know, whatever controversy is going on around other things happening in WWE right now, but I mean, still sure, by there's itself, no there's a, happening in no, no, no. Oh, there's the, I, I, I will say one thing real quick about said controversy. Yeah. Um, so uh, dur- during the uh, breaks between the matches and stuff, they'd show the announcer on cams and everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, they showed the, for a half second, the lower third of the upcoming show. On um, Friday, that I'm not going to mention. Oh yeah, they did. They did, and we heard the booing. We heard the booing, and then we heard the crowd go away in the audio because they turned the monitors yes. off. Yes, yes, they turned the monitors off for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that is a thing. Uh, but you can you can go watch John Oliver to see what that situation's about. Um, so, oh, I had another thread here. Um, no, that's all I have. So hopefully they do another one. I think they're going to do it. Oh, they're going to do it. This, this is going to be. I they're going to do another one. This was a rousing success. I think I kind of like it once a year, mm-hmm. but I I understand if they want to do it more. Mm-hmm. I think they should focus more on storytelling. Whenever Absolutely. the next time is, 
when whenever the next time is, they need to focus more on storytelling because there were two really three really great stories going into this Mm -hmm. and the rest was not right and 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 we we've talked about a a lot about the representation on the go home show we didn't know what show we were going home to uh so by the end of the shows um and and it felt like that uh i have a problem with raw because i feel like ronda was a no show we mm-hmm. throw everybody in a 10-woman tag, mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. you know, yes, I know there's something else coming up. And, um, and Sorg, at, at least from my glancing over at SmackDown, there have been no women's matches on SmackDown. Really? There have been, Becky came out for a segment, and there was a Charlotte backstage thing. I believe there are no women's matches on this SmackDown. There, in this especially, I feel like WWE needs to follow through, right? It, it, it you don't do the good thing and then sleep on it for that's the next couple of weeks, but that's, that's what, what they, they do, do all the time, all the isn't time. it? Even with the uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey, it was like feud, 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 and it's like now it's super, super hot, and you just cool it down. Why? Yeah. Like why would you do that? Like you had Bailey cussing on TV. Yeah. She said you ain't shit. We wanted to see if <laughs> we wanted to see if, if Sasha Banks really wasn't shit. <laughs> and then the next day or the next week, they were tagging. And it's like I thought she wasn't shit. Like, why why are you tagging with this shitty person? Yeah. Well, like, like well, that kind of like there blew is my mind. Way they could have gone with that too, and they tried to pull the trigger on it. They like by having Sasha say that she loves Bailey, like. Okay, if that's the reason there's been friction, because it's like romantic friction, sure, it's, it's kind of like moonlighting. That doesn't even like sound believable to me, though. Like, I, I, and I don't even <laughs> think you need to go that far. That's romantic, but I think it's just really good I, friends I that platonically love each other is fine in this situation, okay. right? Sorg, Sorg, have you seen like the way Sasha and Bailey do their entrance and the way the Iconics do their entrance? Yeah, there's a lot of implications. I'm just saying, without without things being stated, I think there's a lot of implications. And you can get uh, copies of Mad Mike's Fan Fix by emailing Mad Mike Fan Fix no, at no, WrestlingMayhemShow.com no, no, uh, no. for. <laughs> Sorry, I'm saying it like I think the performers want to do that to try and be kind of progressive. Yeah, like and say, hey, this is also a thing that can happen on our television show. London, are, are, are we? Are uh, please, please help me. Are we dudes planning this too much? A little bit. <laughs> okay, like, thank you. I, that's why I've been worried about this perception. And we're like, I'm we kind of want this to happen. I'm just trying to say that there's that there are other kinds of stories that like right. the women wrestlers can tell too. Because it, if you have something that's kind of relationship based, like like the Iconics are, they they it's not defined or anything, but. You can tell they're extremely close. Yeah. Same I mean, but Bailey that's kind of just like women are naturally closer to each other. Yeah. Like I can sit on my yeah. friend's lap and it's like and it's completely cool. Yeah. You sit on Mike's lap and it's like, whoa, like that's <laughs> that's not that's not okay. Yeah. But it's like take it back to oh nine, Angelina Love, Velvet Sky. Their entrance yeah. was so graphic, mm-hmm. way more than Iconics. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're just doing a little like hip swivel, and that's really about it. They were like bending over the ropes and you know shaking their ass into the camera, and it was never t- taken that way. So I don't feel like that's something they should actually do if that's what they're thinking. Mm-hmm. I don't think pulling the plug on the iconics just yet is something to do. Let them have their shine as a tag team. And that's one thing about WWE that kind of like gets on my nerves in a way. Mm-hmm. They pull the plug so fast. I'm just like let let this marinate for a year or so instead of two months um dave dave's asking and like since we're going down this road uh can we have at least one lesbian wrestler in WWE actually come out on air we haven't officially had a guy come out well, on air like they, 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 we yeah, had Darren somebody Young. he came out but not on air i mean i feel like that's kind of just like pin someone on i the mean spot. I feel, yeah like, <laughs> but by me it hasn't become a part of something it's I been like always so subtext so I feel yeah. like Sonya Deville is there. I mean, they haven't really done anything with it, but no. yeah, she comes. She comes out in Pride gear a lot. Like, yeah, but so does so does ba- Balor. So like, yeah. it, it's a supportive thing. It doesn't necessarily need to read as uh, anything else. 
I think Sonya is a little different because even at New York Comic Con, Sonya, Mandy, and Paige were actually at a um, LBGTQ meetup mm-hmm. at New York Comic Con, and it was like promoted by WWE and everything. So that's I cool. think, I think that's kind of leaning toward the right. And I think there will be something in it, but that's all. It's got to be the right. Uh, I mean, it's but, PG still. So what, it is PG. What is the most? What is? What can they do with it? Right, like it's right. not like back and add to the with it. They just need to say that it exists. Well, and also, I, I need, I, you know, we're talking about like a women's first that got ruined by being, you know, James Ellsworth, right? Like, <laughs> I, you, they don't want to screw that up because remember what the 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 lashback was on the James Ellsworth thing. Mm-hmm. So you know. if they cared about screwing things up, <laughs> okay, that okay, yes, I know they're they're not they're not having a good track record lately, but 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 I feel like that is something yeah. like they got to make sure like like maybe Velveteen Dreams kind of thing might be the way you know or something, but I think Velveteen but Dreams the biggest part should, of that too. No, but you shouldn't have like it shouldn't have to be like the overly androgynous thing. Right, right, right. But you gotta make look it, at Sonya Deville now. Normalized. Like she's not really like a main character now. Right. You know she's still kind of like finding her footing, and right now it's kind of hard for her to do that, for the simple fact that she has an MMA background, but you got the four horsewomen like right in front of her. So I feel like sit on it for a minute. Yeah, that's always been weird like, to me too. It's sit on it. Like, like let let that marinate for a yeah, second because yeah. she's not where she needs to be. She's right. still new. Right. And it's like okay, yeah. we know it. You can't you can't bring it up to get it. To help get her over, it, you can't no. right, right right now. I'm she not, doesn't I'm have. Not she's saying, not an important storyline. She's not. Yeah. Really not involved in anything. You yeah. get her. I'm like, not a saying push. you do it to get her over necessarily. I'm mm. just saying you do it so it like is a thing that people can just accept as mm. normalized I as just, opposed to. I don't know. I just think that she needs to like have like a little bit of a story, so mm. we don't really know nothing about her. You know, Mandy Rose and uh, that old absolution. It was cool at first. Then Paige got hurt. And it's like, it kind of like faded them two in the background. And they give her just like a little bit of more shine, give her a little bit more personality. And then she kind of comes out with it and talks yeah. about it more. I think it will be well like received than her just saying, hey, I'm gay. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. They can do that in a video package. Uh, a partner is making a comment, of just pa- in passing, mentioned that she has a girlfriend or something. Like it's not a big deal. Like you said, normalizing yeah, but, it. But like Tyus just Tyus does video packages about like how his grandma had cancer. Like mm-hmm. during Pride Month, why can't we just have Sonya Deville talk about it? Even just like a WWE, it gets better kind of series, right? Probably mm-hmm. that's, that's I, good. I mean, along with the bullying thing, right? That. Darren was a big <laughs> part of the yeah. Via Stars yeah. campaign. It, it's not like it's not like she's gonna come out to the ring. And Michael Cole, Michael Cole's gonna go. It's lesbian time. Like I would say, we have to make it's sure still we're PG. Yeah, we got to make sure we're not in the right town that's gonna like start chanting HLA like yeah. the, like the good old days, quote unquote. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I mean, I, there is. I mean, they kind but of like the video package like the it gets better thing. Like I think that's a perfect idea. Yeah, yeah. And you can have other people talk about it too. You can have your Finn Balor talk about it. Like. Yeah, like I just think that's it. They should try to do that. All right, we got plenty of other things. <laughs> we have plenty of other top hard topics to discuss, like the Hardy's Halloween special. I didn't see that. Hard left, hard left. London, we're going to explain to you oh. the Hardy under, <laughs> <All right. laughs> and we're going to see oh, if God. you think we're crazy for loving it. Oh, <laughs> I think you're crazy now. You oh, okay, that's good. That's good. We're on the right track here. <laughs> Let's do two truths and a lie on the Hardy Halloween oh, special. Oh, jeez. All right. That sounds perfect. <laughs> and we'll find out if Wendell will come back to the Wrestling Mayhem show after uh, the break coming up here. But in the meantime, uh, what we do have, what is going to come back next week is our good friend Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni and pizza right up the street here in Beachview on Broadway, hence the name, as well as our three other locations in Carnegie, PA, uh pnc park home of the pittsburgh pirates that's a little quiet over there at the field but i'm sure but you can still get some pizza and over on the east end go check out all those locations let them know the mayhem sent you don't kick the door down and please don't beat a worker with a pizza box like beast man did i know please not by example not? Not, <laughs> kick I mean, if, the door in if they i guess terrible. if they hand you an unwanted um um an unwanted salad i i'm i guess that's I mean, Cause? me and Beastman are like almost the same size. So I feel like almost, I, almost. I, like I can't I wait to see you in the Royal Eight, Royal Eight tournament next year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez! It's like 
Haas tournament. It's going to be Beast Man <laughs> and it's Sexy Fireman and it's London Ali. Yes. <laughs> like, like we should have like a weighing contest. Like who weighs the most? It's like they do that at they do that at water weight. Just like step on mine. Like someone real heavy, just step on it. The scale. Yeah. It's like six hundred pounds. Well, Trey yeah, well, Miguel, he wore um his chains and he was overweight. So you just need to have like a bunch, of, like just pulling it out, all the heavy shit, right? And then I'm like, I've made it. I'm in. We, we call that Gokuing. Gokuing? Yes. Yeah, there you go. Hey, Dragon Ball Z, that shit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but anyways, our friends at Slice on Broadway. Somehow this is a pizza ad. SliceOnBroadway.com. Let them know the mayhem sent you PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter. We will be back after this message with the big question. A very spooky one. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. I'm going to watch Impact. <gasps> that is awesome. What? Yes. Oh yes. yes. Welcome just back. Episode, Welcome back. Episode. Welcome just back. One just one. It's a form of protest. Form of... <laughs> You're bitter. No, no, I I watched NXT for over twelve years. I I've, I watched Impact for over twelve years. I've just been beaten down by Impact. There's a difference. <laughs> I love Impact. That was like always the place I wanted to go. Like I love. I was a Gail Kim fan. So like mm-hmm. she was so successful in like that smaller company. It was big, but it wasn't as big as WWE. Even when like it was bad at Impact, the women's division still was something, mm-hmm. right? Like if you just watched the women, you were in a good spot. You were, <laughs> especially depends, compared depends to WWE. Especially back year. in like depends on the year. Depends on the year. What were your bad years, Mike? Um, the first couple of years. You think the first were, were bad? I mean, that um, wasn't even yes. like relevant. The first few years, like the division didn't really start to like 07. Yeah, are we yeah, talking the first couple of years of the knockouts well, or or women? I'm talking the first years of existence. Oh, oh no, no, they were bad. Yeah. They yeah. super <laughs> syncages. I know they were not good. <laughs> <laughs> it was no, like no, um, no. it was like WCW, like the Nitro Girls. Yeah, like it, it was. Yeah. But in cages, there was also um, forcing Francine to mime fellatio. That's I a mean, thing. It's not as bad as WWE having tape over sable nipples, so you can never, ever yeah, compare I'm, that I'm, <laughs> to that. Oh yeah, no, I, I, there, there's fault on all sides here. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, listen. <laughs> nobody's well completely 100% no one's on any safe. of this. Let's no be honest. Safe. I mean, no, actually, Lucha is. Lucha? Lucha. That was a pretty awesome. The, the occasional bad comment here and there, but other than that, um, if you show me you know uh, a show where so, Chelsea Green beats the shit at Pentagon for 25 minutes, Lucha, yeah, you're doing all right. Lucha will have a bad comment, right? Like a kind of a demeaning comment. But the women usually back it up and fight back. Yes, so, they do. Like, so you know, it's not left without you know response. Yeah, yeah. You said Morgan. That's Christian Noir. Yes, I know. <laughs> I'm like, who are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I just like fucking with people. On but um, no, I think Lucha is different. Lucha came at a different time, mm-hmm. where like. It was like 2013, 2014 when it came out. We really should women's wrestling decision. was already hot. <laughs> like they came at the perfect time. It was like, hey, we have perfect women's wrestling with no bad background. Mm-hmm. We have great. <laughs> Fresh <laughs> off the thing. They kind of cheated. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, this is too good. I'm leaving this on the show, guys. We're welcome back. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> welcome back. This is good. Uh, yeah. I mean, it is good to look at the kind of the entire landscape here, right? So, well, oh, wait, I forgot. Hold on a second. Mike, hold on, Mike. Or do, yeah. you, do you have your thing to show off there? Because we got oh. to Halloween it up. London, you got yours? Yeah. Hold on. You got yours? Okay. Show, show that off a little bit, Mike. Or, uh... You're going to get this land. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry we didn't mascara proof um, the situation here. I don't See, know, Mike. I would put this on, but... All right, just 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 like you know, hold it in front of your face, masquerade style, and I think you'll be all right. Uh, what are you going as Halloween? I am the mayor of Knoxville. Really? I am the mayor of Knoxville. Knox County. Knox. Is it Knox County? That's it's right. Knox County. That's right. Knoxville is a much larger city. Why do I remember this fitting much differently? Why can't I see out of it? 
<laughs> your head got so much bigger. <laughs> <laughs> they are child size. Thank you to the Thrifty Podcast, by the way, for these. Oh, why is my nose itch? Okay. All right. This will be fine. This Lord, is- it's, all, it's all the fire in Brimstone. Oh, I see. I see. And, and then, London, you're just holding yours uh, yeah. masquerade style. You're going to be a little Ray Ray over there. A little Ray Ray. Ray Respect Junior. the Ray Ray. Yeah. There you go. Six one nine. Too sweet. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, it is time for the big question. Wait, wait, sorry. Sorry. Yes. sorry. Check this out. What's that? Cero? Miedo. Oh. Really? Is that was that an Iron Man hand? No, it's a, it's the gauntlet oh, from from Thanos. The gauntlet. Yeah. That is awesome. I wish I had one. <laughs> Everybody should have one. Everyone um, should have one. They're really great. Okay, if I could read through this mask, we have a question in here. Um, so we're we're going to talk a little bit about the House Hardy special. Oh, I'm not going to be able to wear this mask too long. Um, <laughs> But uh, we're just going to lose the glasses. Alex, nope, that Short. doesn't help at all. Now I can't see anything. Uh, let's see. Uh, so we're going to talk about the House Hardy special. And some of us liked it. And some of us have not watched it yet. So we're, this will be fun. Um, what was the best Halloween segment in or around wrestling? Is the big question. Ooh. Huh. I feel like the boogeyman pops up like every other year. Plus, it was. Know. I don't know if there's ever really been a good one. I agree. <laughs> they're all kind of corny. Well, yeah, they're all corny. I mean, Honestly, I I know exactly what my what my pick is for the big question. Um, I'm trying to remember what pay per view it was for. I want to say it was No Mercy. Um, the commercial for it was Pete Rose giving out candy to trick or treaters. Oh, jeez, and the commercial ended with Pete Rose opening the door after he had been mean to every child who came to the door. And it was Kane. And he just said, hi, Pete. And he grabbed Pete Rose's throat. And it's like, WWE, no mercy. Oh, Pete Rose. You, did, you didn't contribute much to wrestling, but you contributed enough. to be You a contributed a lot more than other members of the celebrity wing of the Hall of Fame. Were you inspired by this, by my mask right now? Is, it, is that yeah, where this I came think. from? Yes. I also really want a fruit roll up now. Yeah, it is very <laughs> fruit roll up y, isn't it? Um uh <laughs> London, do you have one? Do you need some more time? Um I guess that turkey coming out that egg. That's Thanksgiving. It's, That's Thanksgiving. It, it was though. horrible. It was scary though. It was scary. <laughs> it was scary. It was scary. It was scary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. It was scary. And then he danced with Mean Gene, which was even more scary. I mean, yes. It's just Hector Guerrero. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess like the boogeyman, like when he comes out, I mean, it's a surprise. He doesn't do anything, mm-hmm. but you no, know, have crawls on the ground, worms in his mouth, but he gets such a pop. Mm-hmm. Like he doesn't do anything, but he gets such mm-hmm. a pop. He's like hornswoggle, you know, like he just comes out, dance, ruin something and leaves. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like Show up, break shit, leave. Yeah. Like show up. No clock is safe. Exactly. So it's just like. You haven't lived until you watch him feed worms the, to the crowd at an indie show. The man gets the worm. <laughs> Literally. Oh. Have so. you ever had a match against uh, Scotty Too Hotty? No, because worms he was always a face. He was always a face. What do I mean? This, I feel like an indie thing that would happen, right? Like yeah. ALW would have booked that. But Chikara would have done that. Chikara would have done that too. Yeah, let's be honest. Um, um, Alex, Alex is saying, uh, and and I agree, the Halloween Havoc 1999 set. Pretty much any Halloween have they set. did they did um mine mine was I I don't know what I think it was just a trick or treat match I can't remember who the opponent was but Cesaro was in it and and the the ring the out like the perimeter of the ring was surrounded by pumpkins right mm-hmm. which is fine because that you know as it's bounced like they're they're rolling around and falling off and everything mm-hmm. yeah it's it's the trick or street fight trick or street fight thank you trick or street another one of wow. tonight did they you'll love it. yeah you'll love it I'll love it um the the new day came out. I'm not going to say who they're addressed as, but they're addressed as another prominent three-person team in the world of wrestling. With the Freebirds? Nope. No better. Person? Which one? All right, I'll just say it. They came out as the Brood. That's oh. awesome. Oh. <laughs> the, only thing, the only thing cooler would have been coming out as Demolition. Um, I think they've done that before. Have they? I think so. Probably. Um, there is uh, so so yeah. Though mine was that, and, and like Cesaro got like a pumpkin, like on his head. I think it was the Bar versus the Good Brothers. 
No, it was a singles match. It was a singles match? Yeah, it's, it, it's, it it's pretty bar Cesaro versus, let's say, Dolph Ziggler. I most likely Dolph Ziggler. That's, <laughs> probably yeah. Dolph Ziggler. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see. Alex is saying House of Horrors. Oh, no. That was in, like, Alex. May. That was in February. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was in, that like, was like February before or March. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, that, that's the biggest one. Uh, that interest was forbidden by The Undertaker. What? The oh, no, group? No, no. no. Oh. Uh, so, uh, let us know. What was your favorite Halloween uh, oh, wrestling? Oh, another good one. Oh, another really good one. Oh, does he have one? I have, oh, I need to get messages. I can't read yeah. things. What, what's yours, Mike, while I figure oh, out this? What's going another on? Another good one is um, without Halloween, without SmackDown celebrating Halloween, we would not have John Cena. We would not have John Cena. You are right, and Missy is on the same bandwagon here because yes. he she has shared the Vanilla Ice wrapping yes. John Cena uh, in my chat here. I'll throw it up for you guys on video uh, off of my phone here. Look at that hair. Yeah. Without John Cena dressing up as Vanilla Ice and showing... Uh, Stephanie and the rest of creative that he can rap pretty fluidly, with, like off the top of his head, we would never have gotten John Cena where he is today because he would have been fired. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He would have been fired. He was next on the chopping block to go. Jeez. Yeah, there is another one in there. Is this the one I'm thinking? I think I found this at one time because I think it's on like an episode of uh, Tuesday Night Titans I discovered a little bit ago. Is this... Is it Chucky? Hold on. Happy Halloween from Roddy Roddy Piper. Oh, is this, this like, is this WCW? No, this is definitely WWE area. Oh no. I've never seen I, this before. I know I know this promo. I know I know this one. I don't think I've seen this. He, he he's he's like old school eighties. Is that Vince in the background? Okay, here it is for you guys. Yeah, this is how how we're doing video tonight. Um and there's like a little kid dressed as Hulk Hogan, of course, and I'm sure he's being all kinds of pleasant to him. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> and Vince probably, is, to be fair that's probably shane that's probably shane. it is that's probably shane, shane isn't it oh geez shane or like a time displaced nicholas there's like, there's a something. pretty there's a pretty great like halloween dress-up party that has like iron chic and everybody in it from like that era too that is that's like i think like isn't the iron chic like dressed as robin for some reason maybe <laughs> <laughs> like like it was really really weird it doesn't sound real it's I, so great if it is just watch 80s stuff it gets that and weird and sometimes oddly uncomfortable and domestic abusey uh it, the 80s were a tough time guys uh the best time <laughs> the best time the best time <laughs> yeah everyone was like a character like you had the honky tonk man yeah like, it was like a halloween special back in the 80s you see the honky tonk man. You're like, oh, this is a one time thing, and it's like, no, <laughs> no. He dresses like he. <laughs> this is him. He didn't realize he's only supposed to do that one night. Like, this is him all the time. Like, it's like okay, you're Elvis in March, you Elvis in June, and it's Halloween again, and you're still Elvis. Okay, <laughs> we get it. It's like nobody told him. It's like they hit him on the head, and uh, yeah, and and eventually he just dressed as bad Elvis. Bad Elvis. Oof. Um, so uh, let us know your Halloween awesomeness out there as well. Hashtag uh, WMS big question. Um, and everybody, thank you for dropping those videos in there. I, I need to watch the rest of that Piper video after this. Um, so shout out to our friends, Occupy Pro Wrestling. Uh, they have a lot of fun stuff going on. Like I said, I want to show London these uh, these. Uh, these shirts here but again like like there's a smart one that looks like oh i forget what the show is uh but there's a lot of nickelodeon stuff on mm -hmm. there uh but you can check it out like my pro wrestling no, the smart one is the snick logo the snick logo yeah um but uh occupy pro wrestling wants to show their support to a good cause this month for breast cancer awareness month you only got a day left of this so uh, <laughs> please participate uh and uh we'd well, love you to be a part of it when they buy their when you buy their march uh at whatamaneuver.net uh 50 of all of the normal march, march proceeds will benefit the breast cancer research foundation but wait there's more they've also finally released their logo on a shirt 
Uh, they even have it in pink, and 100% of the proceeds from those items will go to the BCRF. You can check out Occupy Pro Wrestling Gear at whatamaneuver.net and get more info on the Breast Cancer Research Foundation at bcrf.org. Like I said, some cool stuff over there. There's uh, Legends of the Lucha Temple and a lot of Nickelodeon-themed stuff. I think there's a Friends one, too. Uh, so if you like the 90s, you're going to love these shirts. I want to see those. And over. Friends was on Nick at Night, so we're still in genre. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, <laughs> so the, it happened. The thing that we hoped would happen, especially when Matt Hardy announced his retirement from wrestling officially, um, the Hardys were given their own television special. Now, Mike, oh in, in yeah. London, I mean, we grew up around the Halloween special, mm-hmm. right? You know, whether it be an episode of our favorite sitcom or or Garfield or something like that. Um this this was like pretty much you would expect. Now, mm-hmm. London, have you seen the the the, the Hardy, uh, broken Hardy like like matches and things before? Like in WWE, WWE or like in, TNA. I seen it in TNA. Okay, so you know what you're getting into, I yeah. think, for the most part. Oh, okay, so two true hell, I wouldn't be as fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. She, I think she has an idea. So it's basically, okay. what if we took this and made it in a half hour show around Halloween? I mean, that's kind of stretching it. I mean, um, you would think that. You would think, um, how can this hold up for a half an hour of television on a I'll, on a? I'll on a... Say I could have done without the musical performances. <laughs> really, you didn't want to see I'll... the debut of Jeff Hardy musically in the WWE because I realize that has not happened in the WWE yet. Um, I definitely did not ever want to hear that. You didn't, and and, and you know it wasn't. <laughs> I didn't realize this connotation because, you know, right after the WWE Evolution pay-per-view, we got the return of uh, Godfather and the Ho Train. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to sleep on the Ho Train. Like, Victoria was first introduced. That's right. Into the Ho Train. So. And do you know, like, I feel like Lita was one, too. I think so, too. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that was, uh, there was, I mean, it's like, it's like the Rosebuds, Rosebuds today. Just it's not the rosebud. Well, I mean, with that they brought in people, and you never knew who you'd see, kind of thing. I mean, Which, I'd rather be called a rosebud than a hoe. Well, yes, <laughs> it's a different era. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know how to deal with that. Uh, don't worry, it turns around. He, spoiler alert, he ends up turning into Papa Shango. <laughs> <laughs> and Senior Benjamin that, got a that lot leg of, re- that leg of reincarnation is a bitch. Oh, I got a lot of work last night. We got Itchweed debuting on WWE television. We got... Um, although they never said his name. No, they didn't. Oh, they didn't? Yeah. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. You're just like, who's this weird character? Um, we also had, uh, speaking of the Rosebuds, um, some of the... <laughs> they had a costume contest, and apparently a, a few of the guys out there were uh, members of the Dojo Pro roster that we were talking about recently um over on amazon uh so that was kind of cool the return of the hurricane okay and an evil hurricane uh, sorry, what about sorry, shannon Moore? Was, was he there sinestra kane sinestra kane oh yeah okay that's why he was yellow thank you wow yeah. i knew there was a connection you're, and you're welcome i got you i got you okay thank you i, I had should have been watching it with mike apparently um it was um, Sorg, you haven't mentioned the most important thing. Vanguard One's going to get some, y'all! Yes, the romantic interlude of Vanguard One and what, what was Mrs. Vanguard named? Uh, they didn't give her a name. They didn't give her a name? Jeez. But two steps was, forward, one step back, there, man. There was a dream sequence. There was a dream sequence. There was a dream sequence. Of the drones Van- getting married. For Vanguard One. And the female drone kissed, got married, and had a little baby drone. Now, the baby drone was black, so Vanguard may have some questions. <laughs> but, you know, that's their journey. I'm not going to fault them for it. That's right. Uh, yeah, so... um. There's a tweet that says, you know, tonight's WWE uh, belt block, uh, WWE Evolution, and followed by 1030 by the Hardys freestyling a Halloween special. So 
Um, this is the kind of content that I think makes absolute sense. And so, they did at least. Uh, a- Sorg, we're going to have more of this. We are definitely going to have because, more of this. Because, Sorg, you didn't mention there are shadowy figures afoot trying to steal the magic of the Hardy compound. This is going to be a story. Mm-hmm. Like, we're going to get a hearty Thanksgiving. We're I'm damn so sure going to get a hearty I think Christmas. I have to watch this. Yes, you do. I just hear what? a whole bunch of... I hope we get a Harvey. Caucasian Harvey have a black day. baby. Is a yellow hurricane. But they're drones. Like, so they're drones. They're drones. <laughs> but like the, the, the drones, the, the, the Vanguard mm-hmm. one. Wow, I just need to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Like yeah, it's like like an anime TV show, like with real people. Yeah, it, it's kind of like a tech savvy Telemundo. Yeah, that seems right. <laughs> <laughs> London, please get a chance to watch this. I'm gonna watch please. it because I feel like I'm please. Like, I, I know you're you're not on Twitter yet, right? No. Please, uh, Instagram, Facebook us your thoughts mm-hmm. somewhere oh. along the line, or or even better, as soon as you finish, just record a five minute reaction video. <laughs> Absolutely, I got you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, Alex is coming up with names in the chat room. House House already presents the giving of thanks, and. Have yourself a woken little Christmas. A woken little Christmas. Yeah, they could keep going. They could do. Alex, Alex, you need to tweet those to Matt Hardy immediately. Yes, because they will be under consideration. Yeah, because if we have a House Hardy presents the giving of thanks, you know the gobbledygooker is going to be there, and you know there's going to be a giant egg. So, London, I apologize. That may scar you. Once again, oh my! Mm. <laughs> but I think it'll be worth it. Oh man! My Especially if Taco Carrera pops out of there. <laughs> oh man! I don't know how to handle this. <laughs> Just, you know, getting freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, well, anything else? There was a, yeah. There was okay. There's listen, guys. Wrestling. I don't because know. the scribe came back. Which I the love. Scribe to I come love back, it. yes. I love the scribe. I wasn't quite familiar with the scribe, um, but I loved the gags that they were doing in that. If you watch it again, the scribe is saying all the lines that Matt is saying, but he's mouthing them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and the scribe is actually a figment of Matt's imagination. Really, I didn't pick up on that. He, he is like he is like the the original Snuffleupagus. Do you guys watch like cartoons? Was, Oh, we watch a lot of And it's cartoons. like, I'm not sure if you ever seen this episode of Family Guy, but uh, Brian takes shrooms and he's like hallucinating. Yeah. This was, this, that's what it sounds like. You think that like we're... A whole bunch of like hallucinations or just things are just popping up and... Listen, man, Sunday got real weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. And, and also, uh, we had Matt Hardy going to deliver, uh, hand deliver invites to his friends. Uh, George Washington, the giraffe. And Smoking Joe Frazier, the kangaroo. Like, how does that even come up as a process thought? <laughs> Matt Matt just goes to a petting zoo and he he riffs. Like the kangaroo was not feeling very camera ready. So <laughs> the kangaroo, I think, actually kicked Matt in the dick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that occurred. Mm-hmm. And he gets really mad and heartbroken. All right. You know what? Okay. Okay. That's a little weird. Well, there's other stuff that happened in pro wrestling in WWE that's maybe not quite as weird. Like a T-Rex at NXT that apparently is Cassius Ono. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing that happened. Pro wrestling's weird. <laughs> I don't know if you see. He was a, he was a Tyran Kaoris Rex, right? Yeah, I believe that's the, that's the case. The, the, the tweet I found this with it was pretty amazing. It's from uh, somebody named uh, uh, I don't know, Christmas Rep Rep that, that, Rep Alex. That, that's not the best costume that NXT had, though. No, what else did they have? Um, Sorg, Sorg, there was a reuniting 
of one of my favorite power couples in the history of professional wrestling. The Conquistadors? No. No, that that was on, that was on the House Hardy thing. Oh, right. It's all blending together. Yeah. Um a a, a special a special man from both live and uh and Monday Night Raw made an appearance on NXT to be the Robin to someone's Batman. Wait, what? EC3 and Drake Maverick <gasps> were together as Adam West and Burt Ward's Batman and Robin. No. Yes. Yes. This happened. It was magical. You look like you appreciated that goodness. so much. <laughs> this was the light at the end of the tunnel of all that impact watching he was at. Mm-hmm. It was just suck, suck, mm-hmm. sucks, EC3 and Rockstar Spud. Basically. On a pestle. So is he still like the manager of 205 Live or no? Manager of that, manager of AOP, and apparently well, he's just... Oh, man. So, yeah, he just he just manages whatever the heck he wants at this point. He's the general man. They've at least given him a cool jacket. Literally the general manager. Like, he just, <laughs> yeah, he just generally manages. At least they don't give him a microphone like Leo Rush. Uh, I, I, I like Leo Rush. I like Leo Rush, but with a microphone at ringside saying, my man, the entire match, I ain't down with that. I like Leo Rush. I think he's entertaining. I he's think, so small. All he does is run around and right. chase. No, I love everything else. Except what they do with him during matches I, right now. I can't wait to see when he first when he sells that first drop kick that Finn's gonna give him into the corner. Oh yes. He's I was, I was partially hoping that this was gonna lead into, well, if you think you're so tough, how about Leo Rush takes on Finn Balor? Because I think that would be tremendous. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean that just generally would be a good match. Yes. So and hopefully that's well, what we get out of this. That'll be um, I know you're not a fan of Bobby Lashley, Mike. Who is? <laughs> okay. Like, really? Who is? I I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who buys the t-shirts. Somebody's out. Sean there. Phoenix so, is. That's his Sean twin. Sean Phoenix. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, his, that's, that's his, his twin. That's his twin. Yes, it is. Look just alike. All right. I mean, it's like uh, similarities. Yeah. <laughs> I, I see it. I see it in the face. Yes. Yeah. The body type. The body. Yeah. Skin is almost uh, wrestling style. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> there was some other history that happened this weekend. Okay, hold back a second. So, a side note: if Leo, if Sean Sean Phoenix comes back, thinks he's Bobby Lashley, and gets Leo Rush as his manager, I'm all in. Who would be Leo Rush? No, I think he just gets Leo, Leo Rush as literally his manager. Literally, just get Leo I think it's Rush. Literally, Leo Rush. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know how long he's gonna be in WWE. You never know. You never yeah. know these days. I mean, yeah, seriously. Stock's not looking good. Uh, you never know. <laughs> <So> <laughs> seriously, <laughs> <everything looking laughs> good right now. As a, it gets weird. Their and, uh, uh, ratings have been flopping mm, mm, lately. Mm, so. mm, mm. Watch John uh, Oliver to see what we're talking about. Seeing that ET3 uh, picture in the chat room. Oh, <laughs> it is amazing. All right. On that note. <laughs> well, sorry, come on. There, there's, oh. there was one other thing I wanted to talk the about. The other history thing you were telling me about. Very briefly. Um, for the first time ever, contracted NXT wrestlers captured titles in other promotions. Yes! The in Evolve. St- in Evolve, the Street Profits won the ta- Evolve Tag Team Championships and Fabian... Fa- Eichner. What's Eichner. That? Fabian Eichner. Fabian Eichner won... Um, is it the main belt? The heavyweight belt? Yeah. The Evolve, the Evolve Championship. Wow. So are they like working with Evolve now? They've been for a while. Like Regal has shown yeah. up there. Triple H has shown up there. And um, so does like WWE own Evolve? Uh, associated. I th- I think they're using it as kind of like um a developmental for NXT. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's like the pre pre NXT. Yeah, it's it's like if, in baseball terms, I think it's like the single A short season. <laughs> what? No, uh, no. He's talking sports ball. I'm lost. Right, in baseball, there's single A short season, single A, double A, triple A, and then the majors. We were just talking about how London doesn't follow baseball because of the blackout rules. So <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Right? The minor leagues. The minor minor okay. leagues. Okay. Um in the smaller minor I, leagues. I mean, this is this is kind of the progress, pardon the pun, because I'm but you know when we have all the UK talent come in, we have all the uh, what was a Revolution Pro and mm-hmm. Progress? Like they have all that footage. They have an association with the Ring of Honor. They have an, maybe an, well, they definitely have an associated with Impact Wrestling mm-hmm. between um, all, all the footage from GWN that mm-hmm. they use on documentaries. 
so I mean, this is just another part of it, right? Mm-hmm. They're not shut off from the, the rest of the world, the rest of the wrestling world. And they're working with these guys. And Evolve has WWN, Gabe Sapolsky. So it, it's probably among indies, it's probably the strongest out there yeah. that they could work with, yeah. right? And and Sorg, in December, Evolve is getting Mustafa Ali for two shows. Mm-hmm. Do you know who he's wrestling in I one of those shows? very aware. It is friend of the show, uh, DJ Z. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of got broken on the internet. But yeah, I did. think we know what you did. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, side note, we just released uh, Learning Lucha with DJZ over at NittyWrestling.us if you're interested in that. Uh, <laughs> so, um, No, that's cool. And it, it is kind of interesting since um, it is kind of like the battle of the light-up ring gear <laughs> at that point, too. I assume if they actually come together in their entrances, they will just form Voltron. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the other one he's facing? It was something else significant, right? Wasn't it? Darby yeah. Allen, the guy that I'm going to get to see wrestle Pentagon in a couple weeks. Darby Allen, that sounds familiar. That's because I told you to look him up because he's going to be wrestling Pentagon. In a couple <laughs> oh, weeks. That's, that's right. right. I'm just I've sure. heard, You're behind I've on heard your he's balls out ridiculous. So okay. I'm really excited. I feel like that's a guy that I saw on. No, that is a cop somewhere. No, nope, that is not. Are you a cop? <laughs> Let's okay. Darby Ellen wrestle. You gotta remember add wrestler to the end of somebody's name to make sure you get the right one. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he might have been at Waterweight. Joe Dabrowski, tell me if this guy was at Waterweight, please. Uh, <laughs> so, um, no, that's great. And, and and you know, I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for something like Evolve or something just folding into the network. I'd pay an extra five bucks for that indie stuff. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's coming down the pipe. Yeah, we've seen the surveys. Yep. All right, guys. Uh, one last shout out here, and we'll get to uh, what you learned. So please get ready for that in the chat room. But we want to give a shout out to our friends. Uh, of course, right across the street here was a big event, Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh. I've been seeing the social media. Lucha Fiesta is going to Japan, you know, with uh, Sam Adonis, Pittsburgh original. Uh, as well as Ultimo Dragon. I believe Caristico is a part of that, too. I think they're doing about four dates over in Japan, but that That's is awesome. the same thing. That is the, the part of the same event that happened right here mm-hmm. across the street in Pittsburgh. It was a classic Lucha Libre Mexican uh, fight party, as you would translate it. Um, it was great. Shocker was there. Um, all the guys I just mentioned, uh, as well as uh, Bull James. Bull James, I think I still have your hat, by the way. Shawn <laughs> Michaels is wearing it over there. I think that was yours. Um, and uh, <laughs> Chris to go and, and, and all the guys, and plus a lot of the guys that we know from IWC were a part of it, like Jackson Argos, Chris LaRusso, uh, Ray Lynn uh, Bostic, and, uh, and uh, uh, Lady Frost were a part of that. Beastman, uh, Mambo Italiano. We, can't, we gotta say his name more. You guys need to experience Mambo Italiano because it's something else. Um, <laughs> I love him. <laughs> he's the, great. The best wrestler. Like, he says it so like, Smooth, like best wrestle dancer in the world. Best Mumbo of- Italiano. Yes. <laughs> oh, geez. Just watching him. Like the language barrier of of English, Spanish, and Italian <laughs> happening in one place, plus whatever Beastman speaks, was one of the most confusing and glorious things I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, so you can experience that. That is available over on Fight.TV. Look for Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh to check this out. And another way you can support Lucha Wrestling in independent wrestling. Some great talent from CMLL and the Pittsburgh area. Mojo McQueen was another one to look out for. Mm-hmm. That guy, I think, is he Ohio-based, I think? I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I don't know where the hell this guy came by, ba- came, except for maybe the depths of hell, but he's, go look him up. He's part of this show and really made a big impression. So, uh, go check out Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh on fight.tv. Guys, now it's time to learn or find out what did you learn from pro wrestling this week? Who wants to go first? Mike? Oh, I <laughs> I learned quite a few things. Okay. Which um, one which ones are you allowed to say on the show? I I learned that um Ivory still had some killer dance moves. She did. <laughs> killer mom dance moves. Like, I want to see a dance battle between Ivory and Cool Mom Steph. Okay. Yeah. All right. I want to see that dance battle. 
<laughs> London, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? I learned that Trish Stratus still has it. <laughs> she still has it. Like she hasn't missed a beat twelve years after she retired and she still has it. That is something I appreciate. Awesome. Oh, geez. What did I learn? Let me, let me look at the chat here and see what's popped up. Um, I, I, I learned, geez, guys, Becky, Becky Lynch is the best on social media right now. <laughs> uh, I, we, we didn't bring this up with her earlier, but, Becky uh, Lynch is the best everywhere. She came out on SmackDown with a shirt that says, I am the man. <laughs> she did. She did. And I think, I think her Twitter, like the, the, where you write her in what Twitter, she, her Twitter handle is, is, like the, her Twitter headline is the man. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there was um um there was there was a she took a screen cap because Ronda Rousey followed her on Twitter, and she was <laughs> and she screen capped it and says you tried, <laughs> <laughs> just just well, sick like, burns to the and entire the roster. Thing is she is pushing the story? Mm-hmm. The Survivor Series. It's Becky and Ronda. Mm-hmm. And Becky's going to finally get that fucking main event match she deserves. We actually mm-hmm. talked about that before we've been on air, that Becky is one of those people that no matter what she did, she can be in the crappiest storyline, be in the crappiest match, lose in two seconds, and the crowd was always behind her because we yep. just loved Becky. And I can't tell you why we love Becky. We just love Becky. And when they finally gave her a chance in a heel turn, it's the greatest thing ever. It's about time. Like, I'd rather... They did, like, the whole Charlotte and Becky feud. I was so... I was positive Charlotte was turning hill again. There's some more gold that she was doing on social yeah. media here. Uh, yeah. Somebody, let me... Uh, Becky, Becky's one of those people, like, my dad had a phrase back in the day, mm-hmm. that she can turn shit into Shinola. Seriously. With an accent. Um, <laughs> uh, Tina, Tina shared this in the group uh, a little bit ago. Uh, where she was just responding to everybody, like uh, there, there was Peyton Royce with with a picture of the iconic saying, "This is what it's about," and and just Becky with her her title <laughs> raise. No, this is what it's all about. Uh, mm-hmm. There was uh, Lana saying, "I'm ravish- ra- ravishing AF," and she just responds, "I'm champion I'm AF." Champion. <laughs> uh, today, Billy Kay. Today, I'm going to bake cookies, eat chocolate, and go to Disney World. Uh, and just a picture of um um uh, oh, was that guy the the dancing the hey Pedro Pedro for present guy. Uh, he says, you know what I did today? Champion stuff. You wouldn't understand. Uh, <laughs> Carmella, there's nothing more beautiful than New England in the fall. I'm in love. Becky, the only fall I love is a pinfall. Now shut your face. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. Um, Becky is Oscar. Oscar, all you need is love. Becky and the women and SmackDown women's title. Jeez. Jeez. Someone take her phone. Someone take that lady's phone. Oh, now. man. Now. So good, so good. <laughs> it, it, it is the extension of what we saw. Hey, Edge, don't break your neck getting out of the ring. Oh, that is that is hilarious. <laughs> that is to end the women's championship. You taking notes? <laughs> like, Becky, when Becky was a face before she turned heel, um, do either of you follow her on Instagram? A little bit, yeah. A little bit. Okay. Yeah. After every SmackDown, when she was a face. Becky's Instagram story was the most entertaining thing I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. Because she would literally break down everything she did on SmackDown using pictures and puns. Mm -hmm. And she would do that for every single episode of SmackDown she was on. They were so meticulous. Like, she put put, a lot of work. work. She was not driving to the next town, obviously. No. Well, I mean, no. uh, Yeah. She was definitely either sitting in the back or doing a ride along or something. Yeah, yeah. But like she put, she was putting in the work to describe literally everything that happened with her segments on SmackDown, and being super clever at the same time. And this is just the next evolution of that. Like for Mixed Match Challenge Season Three, please give me Becky and Champa. Oh. Please, just. That would be a great Give me Becky and Champa. I just want the champion trolls. Like, I don't know what we'd call them. I, ju- I want them to do a promo together, hating on everybody. <laughs> like, hating on 
everyone in the them just world. like and, and they're just like like tandem just beat down verbally beat down somebody right did you see what champa did on social media this week no oh okay all right um i'm going to look up uh champa real quick i'm going to read verbatim Sorry, read the chat room. Find out what else they learned. All right, what else is going on in the chat room while Mike's doing uh, research? Uh, it's like he's doing it like it's his job. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> uh, my my uh, Alex Carr is out there, and uh, Callie learned that uh, WWE is finally starting a, to give women a chance uh, to a certain degree, apparently. <laughs> we'll see. Um, you gotta I, walk before you run. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, it, it hasn't been a quick uh, turnaround. But I can never remember how to spell Champa. I, 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 I have everything. All right, you have, it. have it. Okay. All right. Um, there's there are several tweets here. I'm going to say all of them. Okay. Um, so John, so he uh, quote tweeted NXT when um when it's the picture of Johnny Gargano saying I'm right here looking over a fallen Aleister Black. Champa tweets sometimes you just need to DIY with a tear in my eye. Hashtag Big Daddy Champa is proud. The next tweet. Hey, at Johnny Gargano. Not actually using the at symbol. Let's hashtag Glorious Bomb Alistair Black. P.S. I'm so proud. <laughs> um, and, and then he released an official statement. Oh, I did read the official statement. Yeah. The, the last, the, I'm just going to read the last thing. After last night's episode of NXT, it is clear Johnny has finally seen the light. Johnny wrestling is dead, but Johnny Gargano has never been more alive. And then he posted a picture of the two of them together with three heart emojis. Black heart emojis. That is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Like, for real. Champa and Becky are crushing it right now. Like they're just destroying everything. I didn't know. I didn't notice this. I, I'm looking at at, at his um at Champa's uh, uh thing. He has 125,000 follows or uh, yes. followers. Not he enough. He is following zero. That's <laughs> how you do it. That's a champ. That is a champ. I I hope he just decides to follow one person, and Johnny. it's Johnny Gogan. <laughs> Johnny. <laughs> It's Johnny Gargano. Like, I hope that's the one person he decides to follow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so, so much fun. Uh, London Ali. Glorious bomb, Alistair. Yes, <laughs> Sorry, he's Oh, on. my God. Sorry. We can't let it go. We got to let Mike go. We got we to gotta let Mike, Mike get it out. Get it out here so we can close I'm, it. I'm good. I'm okay. good. I'm good. I'm good. I don't want Missy be mad at me. London Ali. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, and I apologize. <laughs> I had a great time. <laughs> uh, where can people find you online? Online, my Facebook, London Ali, and my Instagram, London, hashtag, I, I lied. London, underscore, <laughs> underscore, Ali. There you go. Go check her out. And, of course, matches, including free stuff over on the indywrestling.us and the social media for that. We uh, definitely put that up here from time to time so you can guys get a little sample of what everybody's about. Mad Mike 4883 on the Twitter. Yes, indeed. I will be on the Twitters this week because tomorrow is Ultima Lucha Cuatro. And I'm very excited. I will be live tweeting that. Go to the at Mayhem show. Look for the hashtag MM. And uh, yeah, I tweet about wrestling things sometimes. I might have to watch the Blucher while I'm editing tonight. <clears throat> Please do. I'm going to have to. Yeah. I, 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 here's, the, here's the problem. Lucha, I want to watch. But? Not while I'm doing something. I need to watch. You do. Unfortunately, I have zip for time. <laughs> I'm usually working or editing other wrestling. So. Yeah. Or you just need to call Aerostar. He will take you back in time. Aerostar is our buddy on Twitter, by the way. Like, <laughs> I we're having a good time with him uh, in the past few weeks, so um, hopefully you can tell us where the show is going to go. <laughs> uh, all right, thank you everybody. Thank you, producer Missy. I also apologize to her too. Uh, she's worried that Mike's taking her job for research. Uh, <laughs> <so>. <laughs> and thank you everybody in the chat room again. You can join us here every Tuesday at nine p.m. Uh, we will not be live next Tuesday on Election Day. Um, Circuitron Media has been. Uh, requested for a 
um, an election party in the south side. So uh, we're going to be doing that. Uh, we do plan to uh, try to figure out something to have something recorded for you guys. And we may do the Facebook premiere. So, you know, it'll be kind of live-ish. You guys can chat room. It's like we didn't go anywhere. And guys, because it's Tuesday, y'all should go out there and smack down your vote. Just like it's 1998. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, please. Yeah, well, actually, seriously, do go vote. Seriously, no, go, go, vote. go vote. Go vote and do not think of the WWE Hall of Fame at all. Last, no. Last <laughs> time I voted, I got Just taken go to jury vote. duty. You got, whoa. Yeah. I don't think that has to, <laughs> that doesn't have to do with the, the it does, fact that she, because it does. When, because when you put your name in the poll, they pick from the polls. So I was picked because I voted. And my pick didn't win. So it was two L's. <laughs> well, thank you for doing your duty twice, at least. I got out of it, actually. Yes. The, the it. point is, go vote. Yes, go vote. Vote. Go, vote. Go, vote. Vote. go vote. Go vote. Absolutely, God, go vote. Right. Go vote, or I will find you. <laughs> Please vote. <laughs> oh, the infinite Ma- Mike taking it out. Thank you, guys. <laughs> See you guys next time. Mayhem out. Wait. Just wait. Just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.